Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, Facebook Live doing National Mac and Cheese Day. This is uh, in conjunction with Swan. Um, get yourself over there and have a look at the page. Give it a like, give Paul's Kitchen a page like. So today it is National Mac and Cheese Day. So I'm going to show you how to do a wonderful mac and cheese recipe. So first of all, I'm going to get some lots of boiling water on for this macaroni here. So it's a dry pasta. It's like a tube, sometimes it's um, sort of a bent shape, sometimes it's straight like that. And in mine, I'm gonna put some two different cheese, well, three different cheeses. I've got in here some mozzarella as well. So we're gonna put in some cheddar, some parmesan, some mozzarella. I'm gonna put some bacon bits in. I'm also, come and have a look at this. I've also got on my grill here, some charcoal cauliflower I'm gonna put in as well. So. If you don't want the bacon in, you want to keep it veggie, no problem, no problem. And on top, I'm going to put some lovely breadcrumbs. But first of all, I'm going to show you how much salt you need to put in the water. It's got to be salty. They say the water should almost be as salty as the sea. So check this out. I'm going to put three big handfuls of salt in there. It seems a lot, right? We're not, eat, we're not drinking that water. We're gonna just only do it for the pasta. They say as salty as the sea, so follow me. Trust me on this. So this macaroni, I bring this water to the boil. This macaroni cheese is gonna take about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, this is the milk to make my bechamel sauce, my white sauce, the basis of it. Here I have a wonderful small onion. And if you have a look, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bay leaf and just Stick it on there, like that, with some cloves, right? I'm gonna just hold the bay leaf on with some cloves, like that. And this is gonna flavor my bechamel. So I'm gonna put that in the milk and I'm just gonna gently bring that milk to a lovely heat. See that? Right, my water's boiling, yeah? Get it nice and rapid. I'm gonna get my macaroni in there. And that's gonna take 15 minutes. Give it a little stir. Watch it doesn't boil over. And that will be absolutely perfect. So, for my white sauce, I'm gonna have 50 grams of butter, yeah? I'm also going to put in 50 grams of plain flour. So I'm going to melt the butter first. As soon as this milk is nice and warm, I'm going to sort the pans over. You don't want the milk to be too hot, you just want to bring it up to a gentle simmer then take it off. But if you don't add your milk when it's warm, it'll go lumpy. Don't use cold milk, it's a bad mistake. Use nice warm hot milk. Also it's going to get that beautiful infusion of the cloves and the bay leaf. So look where we're at here, come and have a look. We've got our gorgeous macaroni boiling away there. If anybody's watching, give us a shout. Give us some uh, any messages you might have, any questions you might have. If you've got any questions, we can answer them later if they don't come up here, but no problem. Right, macaroni's boiling, come and have a look. On camera, Stella, say hello, Kim. Stella. Hi. So you can ask any questions there. There's our beautiful, milk and it's nearly hot enough so i'm just going to take that off the heat now and i'm going to melt my butter so the flour and the butter is called a roux we're going to make a what they call a white roux if you want to make a blonde roux for to make things like a velouté or a soup you color that flour a little bit more so it's like a sandy color and then if you want dark roux for a dark sauce you color it really dark but this is called a white roux and this is the base of all sauces. The bechamel is what they call a mother sauce. So there's lots of different things that come off the bechamel, like a mustard sauce, a cheese sauce, and also a mushroom sauce. Sarah says that David and Hannah are cooking along with you. Marvellous. I hope you got the recipe. Thanks for joining. Um, Sharon says, what are we making today? We're making uh, macaroni cheese. And it is to celebrate the Mac and Cheese Day today, 14th of July, National Mac and Cheese Day. So come and check this out. We've got the butter there, and we've got the flour going in. 
and then I'm just going to just turn the heat down a bit and if you just mix it all together like so until you get like a texture which looks like wet sand come and have a look at that see that See that? Have a look close in. See that texture there? And then, all we're going to do with this hot milk, we're just going to put a ladle full in at a time. Now watch that. Leave it to sit like that, let it boil up, and then mix it together. And it mixes straight in. See that? If that was cold milk, that wouldn't mix in. Look at that. See how that's mixed in? Keep the heat in the pan, keep turning it, make sure it doesn't boil, but these beautiful pans are non-stick and they have no problem. These are the Swan Retro Pans. Now look at this, another ladle full of milk. Sharon right asks, there. are these live demos available to watch later? Yes, they will be. They'll be on my page, Sharon, and they'll also be on the Swan page, so you can check them out. See that? Easy to mix, let it boil up. Check the boiling up, and then, with a spoon, mix it together. Now, if you feel yours is getting lumpy for whatever reason, you can transfer it to a whisk. But if you do it properly like this, slow and steady, it gets really well mixed in and you have no problem. What's the cause of it getting lumpy, do you think? Cold milk. Don't use cold milk or you're trying to put too much milk in at once. If you look, all I'm doing is a little full at a time. So for 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of butter, there's about 550 millilitres of milk. See this? Look, that's important, Stella. You see how you let it bubble? Yeah. What does that do? That's just getting it nice and hot, and that will help break down the flour and the butter, and it's easier to mix in. Got to keep it nice and hot. A lot of people make bechamels, and it, it goes lumpy. When I was young training, you weren't allowed to use a whisk on a bechamel. You had to do it with a wooden spoon only. Um, is there anything you can do to fix it if it does get lumpy or do you just have to start again? No, what you can do, good question, what you can do is use a sieve like this and just sieve it. Or use a whisk and then you can whisk it in as you're going if you see any lumps. But yeah, use a sieve, that's no problem. A bit more milk. Janine said she never knew that you had to use warm milk. Always warm milk, Janine. Um, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, if you use cold milk, it just gets really lumpy and it's hard work. You've got to bring that temperature up of that cold milk to make it mix into the warm roux. If you see that there, every ladleful is perfect. Then mix from the middle, press the roux into the milk, turn it round. It all comes off nice and simple. Don't worry, when you see it like this, it doesn't look like it's mixing, but it comes together perfectly at the end. Watch. See that? All I'm using is a spoon. Give it a good beat. See how that's coming together there? Look. Nice and smooth and simple. See that? See how it's getting thicker? See how it's also loosening off a little bit? So do you have this pan that you mix in in that with hot on the stove or? Which one? This pan there. Yeah, this is on a sort of a medium heat. You keep this on the heat. The milk obviously came to a simmer. I took that off, that's absolutely fine. And now that is gonna be easy to mix in. And it takes, you know, you're doing this while that's um, cooking. So I've got like six minutes left. So in theory, you know, there's no big rush. Take your time. Don't make your sauce first. Make your sauce while your pasta's boiling. See that? Does your sauce freeze well or in the fridge? It can freeze well. Um, you, you're best to freeze the mac and cheese as a finished product as opposed to the sauce. Now it's starting to loosen off now perfectly. Remember, look for that boil. Look for the bubbles coming. Yeah, see the bubbles coming? That makes it easier to mix. Just gently from the middle, like so. Bring it together. Turn it around, make sure you get everything off the sides. Look at that, super smooth, super silky. No whisk, no issues. My old college lecturers will be proud of that one. Pat says she can't wait to make this for tea later. Oh, it's such a good recipe. And I've also got an amazing little cheat recipe for you afterwards, 
with some leftover mac and cheese. See that? Bring it to the boil. Stir it in. Now it's getting easier to mix because it's becoming more liquidy. But this is a point where you don't rush. You don't want to add all your milk now. This is where it could go lumpy. We've still got a couple of ladles left. edges and there we are nearly there look at that there's a sauce style look see that yeah, it's nice and smooth nice and smooth last bit of milk is going in now see this onion we're going to keep this I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that just going to cool down on my table there Jane asked so did you put the onion in the cold milk while it was heating yes. up Put it in cold, let it infuse as it's warming up. It's going to suck all the flavours out of the onion, the cloves and the bay leaf. Now look at that there. I'm going to switch that off. Check that out, Stella. Perfect yeah, sauce. it's really nice. Yeah, look at that. That has been absolutely no problem. Not a lump in sight. Look at that. Look. Super smooth, super smooth. No ladle needed. No um, whisk needed, which is amazing. Okay, marvellous. Right, I've got a bowl here. Check this out. And then here, I've got some crispy cooked bacon pieces. They're going in. And the fat, don't worry. I've got, off my uh, Swan Contact Grill, I've got some beautiful charcoal, charcoal, char grilled um, cauliflower. You can use broccoli, you can use any vegetables you want. I love cauliflower. So it's like a bit of a cauliflower and cheese vibe as well. And all I'm going to do is just chop that up. Just takes a few minutes on that grill. or we'll put it in the oven, if you prefer. Um, with the bechamel, is there, can you use it for lasagna and things? Is it Perfect for lasagna. And if you tune in um, with Swan and Paul's Kitchen, I've got the lasagna, National Lasagna Day. I think it's the 29th. Check that out. Come and join me with that at about the same time. That's going to be awesome. Right, so don't throw that onion away. Yeah, it's got uses. I can, it feels soft. All I'm going to do now is chop that up and I'm going to add all that to the mac and cheese. This has got a lovely flavour and that will go in. So you can see, depending on how much, how small you want the onion, um, you can chop it finely. I like a little bit of texture. So check that out, Stella. Is it best to use a white onion or could you use red onion or shallot? You could use any one you want, but I'm using white. I think it's better because it's a white sauce. Now look at that there, that's my base flavour. Check that out. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit of salt in there. Janet says um, if she's doing a veg version, should she just leave the bacon out? Just leave the bacon out. Put some peas in, put some broccoli in, whatever you want. Put some peppers in. I'm going to put a bit of pepper in there. Like so. So, look what I've got there. Right, I've got a minute left on this. Let's have a little check of my pasta. Look at my pasta here. It's nearly ready. Literally one, one and a half minutes left. All I'm doing is if you look at the piece of pasta. Let me get a piece out instead of using my, uh, no, I'm using. my pasta is cooked. Right, coming in close. See that little line there? So that's called al dente. You see the little faint line in the middle? That's where you want it to be at. Switch that off. And then I'm just going to drain all the water off this. Like so. I'm going to add this to my mix, yeah? So in there now, I've got my macaroni's cooked. I've got my bacon, I've got my onion, I've got my cauliflower. Right. Now, we're gonna go in with all this beautiful bechamel sauce. Check that out, look. Now, a lot of times people don't make this saucy enough. That absolutely sucks up all that sauce. 
So make sure you use all of the sauce. The recipe is absolutely perfect. Don't feel that it's too saucy. Now look, Parmesan going in there, lots of Parmesan. 250 grams of cheddar, look at all that cheese. Make it strong, make it mature. So say if you're making a vegan version or something, uh, does vegan cheese do the same kind yes, of thing? Yes, it'll be similar, it'll be similar. But obviously if you're doing vegan, you, you wouldn't use milk, you would use like an almond milk or an oat milk. Now check this out, it's perfect. Look at that, look how saucy that is, yeah. And that cheese is starting to melt, and you see it's starting to ooze. But you can, which I'm gonna do, depending on how strong your flours are, you can just give it another little splash of milk here. Yeah, it can be cold this because it's already a sauce. Just give it a little splash of milk, I just want this even softer, and it should ooze. Right, look at that, that's perfect now. See that drop, watch, when I turn it, see a drop? That's the amount of cheese you want. Do it one more time, watch that. See that? That's how runny it should be, because that's going to suck up all them lovely juices. You keep an eye on that, Stella. Lucy says, um, why don't you put the cheese in the bechamel to melt? You don't need to, because it's going in the oven. So you want that cheese to be strandy. You want that cheese to be oozing. What I am going to put in here is some flavourings. Now check this out. I've got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, four or five drops of Tabasco or a chilli sauce, and then I'm going to put in a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. You can put, you can add this now or you can add this when you're making your sauce, but make sure you add it off the heat. And then just going to give this a good mix. These um, flavourings, the mustard, the Tabasco, the Worcester sauce, they love the flavour of cheese. Mm. And they absolutely bring all the beautiful flavours out. That's amazing. Right, so, get myself a suitable dish. Like so, and all I'm going to do now is Pour all that in. Look at that. Yeah. See that? Mm. And then, which is really good, I'm going to stud this with more cheese. This is mozzarella. This is going to make it really oozy on top. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. I'm just going to press that in so you get little nuggets of oozing cheese coming out everywhere. Look Definitely can't have this on a diet. <laughs> well, you can, Stella, but you just have to eat the right amount. You keep an eye on that, Stella. Now you can put some more cheese on top. Bit of cheddar, you could have kept some of your cheddar. I think the recipe says keep some of the cheddar. Or if you like me and you want a cheese fest, add some more cheese on top, either some cheddar or some mozzarella, whatever you want. And then you put in this lovely breadcrumb. This, so this is just panko breadcrumbs, or you can use any breadcrumbs you want. And you mix this with the butter, equal amounts. So 25 grams of butter, 25 grams of breadcrumbs. Gives this a beautiful crunchy crust. Do you want to season the breadcrumbs with salt and pepper or is it fine? No need, there's enough seasoning going on here. Look at that. Right, I'll get my hands up clean while you stir up that. Pat says, can you use goat's cheese instead of mozzarella? You can, it's a strong cheese, Pat, but you can. You can, it's no problem, but so, it's, a, it's a strong cheese. So would you add the goat's cheese on top like you did with the mozzarella or in the If I was you, Pat, what I would do is, you know when we stood it in the mozzarella, I would stud in lumps of goat's cheese and still do the recipe as it was, because goat's cheese is a strong flavour, or substitute the um, cheddar and use a hard goat's cheese and grate that. Now, just going to put a little bit of pepper on there, so... Like so, and that's going in a hot oven for a 
12 to 15 minutes. Let's have a little look. Cool. Right, so I said, let me just clean this. I said I had a little cheap recipe, which I think you're gonna really enjoy. So what I've got is some cold macaroni cheese and some bacon bits there. So this is stuff we've had left over, bacon for breakfast and some mac and cheese that's left over. I'm gonna show you a really, really excellent, dirty mac and cheese burger. So what I'm gonna do with this frying pan is I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil. Like so. I'm gonna get that nice and hot. I'm just going to while that's heating up, I'm just going to put my bacon in there. I'm just going to cook this bacon off till it's crispy. But also what's going to happen is, the flavour of the bacon is going to go into the fat. Like so. I'm going to clean. And then, what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to breadcrumb the mac and cheese. So this is some leftover that I had. Look at that, it's all gone quite firm with the cheese, but that will soften up deliciously. So all you do is, I just want you to mould it into the shape of like a burger. Like that, yeah? See that? You can see it with the mac and cheese. You can see the bits of bacon, it's got the broth, it's got the collie in there. And all I'm gonna do is gently give that a little bit of flour. You can imagine this is like a huge macaroni sort of mac and cheese style, sort of fish cake style, but it's going to be a burger, like so. Then, into my egg, and then into my breadcrumbs, like so. It's going to keep it all together, it's going to give it a lovely crunch and texture. Can you have a look at that, Stella, while I wash my hands? Right, have a look at my bacon here, look at my pan, I've got some lovely colour on my bacon, you can see all these lovely crispy bacon bits in the bottom, what I'm going to do now is put in my mac and cheese burger, look at the top, I'll just turn that down a little bit, I'm going to go in with a little bit more oil, and because this is really really gorgeous i'm going to go in with just a small knob of butter check that out that's how we uh, do knobs of butter all the chefs you watch that butter ooze into it how good does that look mm. is that insane it's definitely not the healthiest does that look absolutely amazing look at that I'll get my plate. Once my bacon is cooked, like so, look at that, look at that beautiful colour on that bacon. I'm going to take that out. Look at that. And that is for my burger. Look at that. Let that sit nicely. And then, I'm cooking this mac and cheese in the lovely butter and the bacon juices. Just going to give it a little bit of seasoning, like so. Oh, wonderful. Could you do this in the oven if you don't, if you... Yeah, if you want to do this in the oven, put a nice knob of butter on top, put it on a tray, put a little bit of oil on the bottom, and here's my lovely bun. So. I want that nice and brown. Let's see where we're at with that. Not quite there, but it looks amazing. And I can feel the mac and cheese burger starting to soften. Now, if you imagine, that's going to ooze when it's eaten into. So, that's lovely there, sitting happy. I'm going to get some cheese, because it is a cheese fest. And I'm going to put some more cheese on top, like a proper bacon and cheese burger. A couple of slices of that. Wow. Do you think that's enough? Yeah. Put that away.
후에 Time to turn this baby over now. And you see this is gonna have a gorgeous, beautiful brown colour. Look at that. See that butter foaming? That's where we wanna be at. Yeah? Look at that. Give a little bit of salt. A bit of pepper. And that is just cooking nicely. Look at that warming up in that lovely hot butter. Now, I'm gonna put my cheese on there. So the heat of the pan is gonna just start to soften the top of that cheese. Look at that. Now this is perfect. If you're feeling slightly delicate, maybe after too few many glasses of wine, or you've had maybe a couple of shandies extra you shouldn't have had, this, fixes all illnesses. Look at that. That is lovely, nearly there. A little bit of beautiful colour. Still look at that while I check out my uh, mac and cheese. Mac and cheese is looking amazing. See that? Now that is ready, I think. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm gonna get good. my bacon on there. Look at that. Wonderful bacon. The heat of the pan, all that heat on that area, warming that up. A little bit more. That's nearly there. I reckon that's done. So I'm just gonna carefully lift that out. Sarah says, what wine do you recommend with the mac and cheese burger or should she go for a beer? For me, it's got to be a nice cold beer, Sarah. But if you like a good wine, I would go for something like a Pinot Noir or I'd go for a nice crisp um, Sauvignon Blanc. One of each there. I'm just getting rid of all this extra butter. And I'll just wipe that pan out. All I'm going to do with this, look at that, great pans. Check that out. All I'm going to do is dry toast my buns, press them in there, on the inside, yeah, see so how it's starting to toast. Do you recommend brioche buns for this? Brioche is good, seeded buns, I don't know, what, what do you reckon? I like it with Giabata Stella, it's great with these brioche buns. Um, I like a you could do, if you wanted a real texture, you could do some slices of really crispy sourdough. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, look at that. See that? Toast on the inside. Once that's toasted lovely, we're going to put the burger together. I'm going to do some barbecue sauce, which would be awesome with this. I'm going to now just toast the outside of the bun. Check that out. God, that looks amazing. What? That looks amazing. How good that look? Give it a little squish down. Look at that lovely toasted bun each side. Give a squish. How marvellous is that? Can it be any more amazing than that? Now look at that. That is a cheat, isn't it? Let's split this in half. And then check this out. Look at this. Watch. Look at that. Look at the mac and cheese. Watch it ooze. Look at that. That is a tremendous burger. Using up leftovers, something that's delicious. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to try a little bit of this just to check it's for good quality. I know who's going to eat the rest of that. I'll put that aside for you. That is amazing. Switch the heat off. And now let's have a little look of this. This is ready. This is ready. Let me put the tea towel down so it doesn't burn my board. Get rid of that. And check out this mac and cheese. Look at that. 
Look at it bubbling at the edges. Look, it's all beautiful brown on top. And then, if I was to get a gorgeous bowl and a spoon, let's see when I open this up, watch. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the strings. <laughs> Look at that, this is a very generous six portions. Got to try this as well, haven't I? Got to check that as right. Look at that, crispy top, saucy, cheesy. Look at the, just, you can see the strands of cheese just melting everywhere, look at that. Look at that. It's a cheese fest, that's for sure. It's a cheese fest. It's so good, it's so good. I urge you to make this. Please make it, put it on Swan's Facebook page, send your pictures in, do a thumbs up to them, do a thumbs up for me. Thank you so much, this has been amazing. The weather's gorgeous, we've got some hot mac and cheese to have for our tea. Sarah, see, tell me how yours was later. And anybody who's gonna make it, thank you so much. Come and join me on the 29th where we're doing a lasagna from scratch. And we've got a lovely, another cheeky, um, special recipe to go from the leftover lasagna. That is amazing. Thank you very much, everybody. I will see you next time. And this is it. See you later. Bye-bye.